Hello, saints. Peace, love, grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you. 2 Timothy 2.15 Study. The first word that Paul uses is study. He doesn't say try to study. He doesn't say study when you have time. He doesn't say just get around to studying. Paul writes, Study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth and what is the word of truth it is the entire bible all 66 books from genesis to revelation in fact paul has much to say about how we're to treat the gospel things to avoid and things to especially pay attention to in galatians 1 verse 7 which is not another and here he's talking about the gospel but there be some that trouble you here he's talking about people that have other gospels, false teachers that try to trick you and try to pull you away from right division and would pervert the gospel of Christ. Verse 8, But though we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel unto you, then that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. So what gospel is Paul talking about here when he says, ye have received? To answer that question, we go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So we see the gospel that Paul says we have received. It's clear in 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4. Also, Paul says, if anyone, if anyone, whether it be a man or angel, preach anything other than this gospel, let them be accursed very serious situation Paul warns us again in Colossians 2 8 beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ it's clear that Paul was concerned about the body of Christ being tricked into believing false gospels even back in his day 2,000 years ago. We see in Thessalonians, people were forging some of Paul's letters and spreading a whole new gospel, a false teaching concerning the rapture and the day of the Lord. Again, Paul writes about his concern over this and over all the other false gospels that were floating around back then. Look at Acts chapter 20 and verse 28. Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God, which ye have purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not sparing the flock. Also, of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I ceased not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And lastly, Paul delivers a very serious and severe warning in 1 Corinthians 16, 22. If any man love not the Lord Jesus Christ, let him be anathema maranatha. Notice, it's not anathema, comma, maranatha. The King James Version Bible says anathema maranatha. 
in the new version say anathema comma our Lord come completely removing the context of what Paul's trying to say here do you know what anathema maranatha means folks translated it means may the Lord deliver judgment and curses upon the man who doesn't love the Lord Jesus Christ that's a perfect example of what tradition of men can do to you now let me ask you a quick question if you're going around saying Maranatha to all the Christians is it because you learned what it meant by studying the King James Version Bible or is it because you heard somebody else saying it and it sounded really nice so you go around using the same word Maranatha as well now think about that and then go back to this phrase anathema maranatha and study it out that could be a whole study all in itself notice this is the only place in the entire 66 books of the Bible where the word maranatha is used and it's something to think about anathema maranatha it's a phrase all these warnings should really make you think about the seriousness of tampering with God's Word and promoting false teachings and adopting traditions of men versus sticking to what God's Word teaches. Okay, so moving along now to our study, you probably noticed a warning that this video is going to maybe have some graphic content, mostly in the form of images. So if you have little ones that usually watch these studies with you, then I recommend you watch it first and then I'll leave the rest to your discretion okay today's study is regarding two passages in God's Word the first passage we're gonna find in Matthew 24 and the second passage we're gonna find in Luke 17 specifically we're gonna be looking at the verses that talk about people living it up marrying working eating drinking carrying on with normal life as we know it today now the question is who was Jesus talking about who is he talking to in these passages and also just as important what time period was Jesus referring to when he explained these things to the Apostles when they asked them there are basically three different teachings on this and I'll tell you now two of them are wrong two of them are false teachings and one of them is correct the first teaching is that Jesus is talking about the world at the end of Daniel 70th week or the seven-year tribulation the second teaching is that Jesus is talking about the middle of Daniel 70 70th week just prior to Jacob's trouble which happens three and a half years into the seven-year tribulation period the third teaching is that Jesus is talking about how the world is going to be just prior to Daniel's 70th week like I said one of these is correct and the other two are not in the Bible you'll know which one is correct and which one is in God's Word by studying along with us here today now before we get into the, the that part of the study we need to plug in our formula of right division asking who what where when and how first we need to establish what time period this passage refers to right is it in the prophetic program for the 12 tribes or is it in the mystery program for the body of Christ today to answer that question we're going to use the illustration here in front of us on the screen you'll notice here that the mystery gospel of grace given to Paul is missing our 2000 year period of grace is missing so all that's in front of us right now is the prophetic program for the 12 tribes we see their past and their future and it's a complete prophetic picture of the nation of Israel minus the 2,000 years, minus the Gospel of Grace, minus the 13 books, Romans through Philemon, the books that Paul wrote. So what we see here is Israel's past, Israel's future, and the past has been fulfilled for the most part. And there's one week remaining, that's Daniel's 70th week. All the Old Testament prophecies regarding uh, that time period, all the way to the coming of Jesus, his crucifixion has been fulfilled. Yet, there's one major future prophecy that we see in the Old Testament that hasn't been fulfilled and that's the prophecies concerning the day of the Lord the 1000 millennial reign and the great white throne judgment and the creation of a new heaven and a new earth 
So today, our focus is on Daniel's 70th week. It's important to understand that the day of the Lord is not one literal 24-hour period, but it's a period of time. The Apostle Peter specifically tells us what a day is to the Lord. In 2 Peter 3, 8, But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. And we'll see when we, when we look at scripture on this, that when Jesus says, no man knoweth the hour of that day, he's speaking about not knowing the exact time the clock will start ticking into Daniel's 70th week or the seven year tribulation period. And when the apostles, when the apostles asked Jesus when these things would happen, he tells them, no one knows, not even the angels when this day is going to begin. But he does tell them some details of the events that are going to happen during the day of the Lord. And many of the Old Testament prophets were given prophecies concerning the day of the Lord. And one of them was the prophet Daniel. The angel told Daniel that God established 70 weeks of time for his people, the Jews. In Daniel 9, 24 to 27, 70 weeks, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Thy people means Israel. These are Daniel's people. And upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy and we know also that Daniel was given some details about the day of the Lord but he wasn't given all of them the angel told Daniel to seal up the book and later in the future more of the prophecy would be explained in more detail and that's where John comes into play Jesus Christ our Lord gave John a more detailed play-by-play -play about Daniel's vision and all the other Old Testament prophecies concerning the day of the Lord. You see, John got to see what Daniel wanted to see, but had the book sealed in his face. Daniel wanted, uh, he wasn't allowed to see what John was shown in the book of Revelation. So now we have the book of Revelation, and it's all about the day of the Lord. And about Daniel's prophecy for who though for who is this for it's still for Daniel's people that didn't change it's still for and to the 12 tribes of Israel the, the nation of Israel keep in mind we're still talking about Israel only even without the body of Christ the Apostle Paul the, the past 2,000 years we've removed that from the picture remember so we can see that the book of Revelation would have happened even if they would have accepted Jesus Christ as their Messiah 2,000 years ago. Something interesting is that the day of the Lord will be the third day, right? Just like Jesus rose on the third day, the day of the Lord will begin on the third day, the 3,000th millennium. And in case you haven't noticed, this year ends the second day. We're at the end of the 2000th year. The next 1000 years will be the millennial period when Christ Jesus is on earth ruling over the 12 tribes. Just, just That's something to think about. Remember, it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. It's not John's revelation. It's the revelation of Christ Jesus. Also, Something I think that hinders people from understanding these seven years is that they underestimate the destruction that happens during this period of time. Jesus himself tells us that Daniel's week is going to be worse than the flood, which killed everyone on the planet except for eight people. God tells us that he's going to intervene in Daniel's 70th week just to save some flesh on the earth. 
Without God's intervention, all flesh would be destroyed during the seven years of Daniel's week. Okay, so let's begin by reading both passages in context. Remember, we need to ask who, what, where, when, and how to rightly divide. We need to understand the context of what's going on before trying to understand anything in God's Word, right? This is, this is all about studying to show ourselves approved unto God as workmen not being ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Paraphrasing here, okay? So don't throw any stones at me just yet. So now, let's study out the first passage that we're dealing with here in Matthew 24 in verse 38 we'll be looking at that specific passage but let's start in Matthew 24 verse 1 and Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple okay so Jesus here is speaking just to the disciples and Jesus said unto them see ye not all these things verily I say unto you there shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down Jesus talking about the destruction of the temple and as he sat upon the Mount of Olives the disciples came unto him privately saying tell us when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world and the word world here means age at the end of the age they're asking him about the day of the Lord here. And remember, the day of the Lord is a period of time. It's not a 24-hour period. It, and specifically, they're talking about Daniel's prophecy here, okay? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Notice here in verse 4 through 8 that we're going to be reading, Jesus is telling them about the first three seals in Daniel's prophecy also known as the book of Revelation, the first three seals. In the verse we just read, in verse 4, Jesus tells them about the Antichrist coming to power, seal number 1. In verse 5, For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. Again, this is the first seal, the Antichrist coming to power. In verse 6, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. Okay, there Jesus told them about the second seal, wars and rumors of wars. In verse 7, for nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. And in that verse, Jesus tells them about the third seal, famine, pestilence, plagues. And that brings us to the middle of Daniel's week. And you're going to see why. And in verse 8, all these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows, these are what the false new perversion Bibles call the birth pains, right? Jesus tells his disciples that the birth pains will be the first three seals that we see in the book of Revelation, the first three and a half years of Daniel's 70th week. And how do we know it's the first half? Then look what Jesus says here in verse 8 through 20. We see the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist. We see the beast system going after the Jews and those that love Jesus Christ and so forth. In verse 9, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and ye shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake and then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate another one another verse 11 and many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many and because iniquity shall abound the love of many shall wax cold but he that shall endure unto the end the same shall be saved and this gospel of the kingdom what gospel the gospel of the kingdom not the gospel of grace shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations and then shall the end come when ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place 
Whoso readeth, let him understand. Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down to take anything out of the house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe unto them that are with child and to them that give suck in those days. But pray ye that your flight be not in the winter, neither on the Sabbath day. So we just read about the abomination of desolation, the Antichrist going after the Jews, and Jesus warns them to flee to the mountains, heading east. Now look at the next verse. We see Jacob's trouble, the last half of Daniel's 70th week here. For Daniel's people, the Jews. Verse 21. For then shall be great tribulation such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Great Tribulation, Jacob's Trouble. Where do we get the name Jacob's Trouble from? Well, it's found in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it and except those days should be shortened there should no flesh be saved but for the elect's sake those days shall be shortened now let me ask you a question here about this point let me ask you at this point does it sound thus far like people are going to be living normally eating and drinking and marrying etc think about that verse 23 then, if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. This is an indication that the Antichrist is going to use bait to draw out the Jews that are hiding in their closet. Okay, they're hiding. And he's going to use bait by pretending to be some prophet. Okay, and he's going to try to draw them out. You're going to see more of this in the next verse. In verse 24, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets, and shall show great signs and wonders, insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. If it were possible. But God is going to supernaturally protect them. It won't be possible because God is going to protect them just like he did in the wilderness when they're coming out of Egypt. He's going to protect them from the Antichrist. He's going to protect them from being tempted. Okay? Verse 25, Behold, I have told you before. Now clearly, Jesus is clearing up Daniel's prophecy for them so they know what's coming with the day of the Lord. Verse 26, Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. For as the lightning cometh out of the east and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels, remember that army of angels, with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Now we talked about these army of, this army of angels in another video uh, coming with Jesus. They do two things. They collect believers and unbelievers. The believers are kept on the earth and the unbelievers are taken away from the earth to be destroyed. Now in the next verse, notice how the sentence starts. The word is now. Okay, So it changes the timing and subject. It's not the word and, okay? So it's not a continuation from verse 31 as far as events are concerned. 32. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know 
that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the door. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But of that day and hour knoweth no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. Notice the phrase, that day. This is speaking about the day of the Lord here. It's not a 24-hour period, okay? Jesus is saying, no man or the angels know when the day of the Lord is going to begin. Only the Father knows that. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Here, Jesus is explaining the activities leading up to the day of the Lord and the second coming. Remember, the day of the Lord starts at the beginning of Daniel's seven-year period. So, if Jesus is describing the days leading up to the flood or the day of the Lord, then guess what time period he's talking about here in this next verse? Verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came, and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Jesus explains the actions leading up to the day of the Lord. Then, the day of the Lord, by saying, the flood came, and then the second coming, when he says, and took them all away. Next verse, he explains how people will be taken away at the second coming. Again, I've made several videos all about the second coming. You can find them on my channel. In verse 40, Then shall two be in the field, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one uh, shall be taken, and the other left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good men of the house had known in what watch the, the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his household to give them meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you, that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But, and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and to eat and drink with the drunken, the Lord of that servant shall come in a day, when he looketh not for him, and in an hour that he is not aware of, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites, there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, in Luke 17, we see a parallel passage, meaning uh, basically the same event, but it's recorded by another writer. In this case, it's written by Luke. And Luke records the same, same thing, but he adds on to it, okay, additional things that Jesus says. So let's see what Luke says about this talk between Jesus and and uh, the, the uh, disciples in Luke 17. And for that, in Luke 17, we start off, Then said he unto the disciples, It is impossible, but that offenses will come, but woe unto him through whom they come. It were better for him that a millstone were hanged around his neck, and he cast into the sea, that, than that he should offend one of these little ones. Now, we scroll down all the way down to where he starts talking about the day of the Lord in verse 23. And they shall say to you, see here or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighteth out of one part of heaven under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must 
he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. He's talking about the crucifixion, death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? We're stopping there. He stops there. Notice between verse 25 and 26 is where the 2,000 years come into play. This is where the mystery gospel would be. Okay? But he hasn't revealed it yet. It's still hidden in God at this point. Paul's gospel the mystery gospel of grace, the secret hidden within God, the secret that there be a body of believers of both Jews and Gentiles built. All of that was a secret at this point. So Jesus tells them verse 25 about his first there has to come a crucifixion. You know, first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And then he skips over 2,000 years. And look what verse 26 says. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. Okay, he jumps straight to Daniel's 70th week, straight to Revelation, right? Verse 27. They did eat, they drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day, the day of the Lord, beginning of Daniel's 70th week, that Noah entered into the ark. And the flood came and destroyed them all. Noah going into the ark is a parallel of the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. Noah going into the ark is the same thing as the, the Jewish remnant going into hiding for seven years. Okay, God is going to protect a remnant of the 12 tribes of Jacob right okay verse 28 likewise also as it was in the days of lot they did eat they drank they bought they sold they planted they builded but the same day that lot went out this is when the remnant is hidden okay of sodom it rained fire and brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed in that day he which shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house, let him not go come down to take it away. And he that is in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife, whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it, and whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. I tell you, in that night there shall be two men in one bed, the one shall be taken, the other one left. Two women shall be grinding together, the one shall be taken, the other left. Two men shall be in the field, the one taken and the other one left. Again, this, this is by the army of angels. The ones that are taken are taken by the army of angels that come with Christ. And they're going to be removed. These are unbelievers, right? And the same angels are going to gather the elect from the four winds of heaven. Why does it say heaven? These are resurrected Old Testament saints as well, right? They're going to meet their souls that have been in heaven with Jesus all this time waiting. And they answered and said unto him, Where, Lord? They want to know where these people are being taken to. The, the one's left in the field, the other one's taken. And they're saying, Okay, where, where are they being taken to? And he said unto them, Wheresoever the body is, thither will the eagles be gathered together. Bodies of unbelievers are going to be removed and taken to destruction. This army of angels are going to remove unbelievers and gather the elect from the four winds of heaven. And the resurrected Old Testament saints are going to meet their souls that have been in heaven with Jesus Christ waiting, right? No man knoweth the hour, nor the angels. It could happen at any moment. But first, the rapture, then the day of the Lord begins. Are you ready for that? Okay, so let me remind you, we haven't talked about any of Paul's books, Romans through Philemon, at all. We went outside of the mystery program that's for us today. All we talked about is the prophetic program, the dispensation of the kingdom, the program for the 12 tribes of Israel. Folks, in case you haven't figured this out yet, let me, let me help you. The days just before the day of the Lord, Daniel's 70th week, we're in those days right now, just before the Antichrist comes to power. Two things are going to happen very, very, very soon. First, we're going we're gonna to be violently snatched out of here. The harpazo, the rapture, the secret mystery of the rapture revealed to Paul outside of the prophetic program. It was a secret. 
It was a mystery hidden from all the ages, hidden by God from even the angels, waiting to be revealed only when the Jews rejected Jesus Christ as their Messiah. And they kill Stephen, the prophet Stephen. Then comes Paul. That's when the 2,000 year period is revealed to Paul. So first the rapture were removed uh, to allow the Antichrist to come to power, the first seal, the beginning of the day of the Lord. You don't want to miss the rapture, friends, because if you do, you'll feel just like they did on the outside of Noah's boat when God shut the door and sealed it. It's going to be too late. Because the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night, and no man knows that hour. That tells me that the day of the Lord will commence right after we're removed by the rapture. No time for the world to even think about what's happening. It's going to hit him hard. It's going to hit him fast. And it's not going to be pretty. Also, one reason on top of many other reasons that the rapture has to happen prior to the seven years is because the body of Christ wouldn't make it to the end. We'd all be killed by the Antichrist. There'd be no need for a rapture at the end of Daniel's 70th week. We wouldn't be here. We'd be in heaven already. So the rapture has to happen prior to Daniel's 70th week. Notice, there, there's human people preaching for the first half of Daniel's 70th week, right? The time of sorrows, the birth pangs. But then the world is in so much chaos in Jacob's trouble that God has to use non-humans to preach. Because they can't be killed. God uses angels to preach during the last half during da Jacob's trouble. Angels are going to travel all over the world to preach from the air in every known language known to mankind. Every human body on the earth is going to have the opportunity to repent and believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah. So, if it's so bad in the second half of Daniel's, Daniel's week that God can only use angels instead of humans, how would the body of Christ make it through Jacob's trouble to be raptured at the end? It's impossible. Like I said, another reason why the rapture has to happen prior to Jacob's trouble, prior to Daniel's 70th week, prior to the day of the Lord. Lastly, there can't be two gospels going on at the same time. You're not going to have the dispensation of grace, dispensation of the kingdom going on at the same time for seven years. That's just not going to happen. It's a short period of time. God has to abruptly end the dispensation of grace and restart the dispensation of the kingdom. There's not going to be an overlap like there was in the book of Acts. There's just not enough time for the overlap. There's only seven years to work with. So in closing, as in the days of Noah, they were eating and drinking and marrying and carrying on as usual, is speaking about these 2,000 years leading up to the day of the Lord. Leading up to Noah's flood, right? It's talking about the days we're in right now, friends. And suddenly, without warning, the day of the Lord will begin with the abrupt closing of our dispensation of grace and the abrupt beginning of the dispensation of the kingdom and I pray it's all crystal clear to everyone studying with me in this video thanks for studying with me saints peace love grace of Christ Jesus be with all of you Lord willing I'll see you on the next video